region. The Indian Council of World Affairs is honored to bring together scholars of F eminence to present their views and recommendations on the way forward in strengthening this relationship. Over the one, next one and a half days, the deliberations will be held under four thematic sessions, namely strengthening political relationship, building complementarities in trade, investment and development, building bridges through cultural and social interaction, and diaspora and identities in India lack relations. To inaugurate this seminar, I welcome our two very eminent guests, Sri V. Mulidharan, Minister of State for External Affairs and Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs, Government of India, and Her Excellency Ms. Asna Kanhai, Ambassador of Suriname to India. I take this opportunity also to welcome our distinguished guests and also extend a warm welcome to the diplomatic corps in Delhi, eminent persons, scholars and academics who have taken their time off to graciously accept our invitation to participate in this seminar. May I request Director ICWA, Dr. T.C.A. Raghavan, to kindly present his welcome remarks. Uh, good afternoon, Shri V. Murlidharan, Minister of State for External Affairs and Parliamentary Affairs, Your Excellency Ashna Kanhai, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Before I deliver my formal remarks, uh, may I just pause to recall the, the tremendous contribution which our former Foreign Minister uh, Srimati Shushma Swaraj uh, made to this uh, institution, both during her tenure as External Affairs Minister, but also as Leader of Opposition, as Member of Parliament, and as such an eminent public figure uh, of our Republic. May I therefore request all of you ladies and gentlemen to rise uh, so that we may observe a minute's silence uh, in, her, uh, in her memory. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, ladies and uh, gentlemen, we are delighted to have with us in our midst Shri V. Murlidharan, Minister of State for External Affairs, and I am personally very grateful to him for finding the time to grace this occasion despite the intense pressure uh, of uh, official work since he also holds the charge of Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs. And as you are all aware, we have had a very hectic Parliament session. Sri Murlidharan has been a member of the Standing Committee on External Affairs. He is, I should uh, remind some of the, some in the audience, he is from Kerala, which is India's one of India's most connected <coughs> states internationally. He is also a member of state, member of parliament from Maharashtra, one of our most globalized states. Uh, we are confident that the ICWA would continue to benefit from his guidance in the future also, and he will also continue to grace our events from time to time. I would also like to welcome Ambassador Kanhai, senior most of the Latin American and Caribbean ambassadors uh, uh, in India, and we greatly look forward to her interventions uh, today. Uh, since its establishment in the early 1940s, the ICWA has sought to maintain a special focus on the broad region of area studies. Uh, as a publicly funded think tank, we also endeavor to give to all our events a certain profile which is all India in nature. So I'm very glad in that in this seminar today we have participants and scholars from Goa, from Kolkata, from Manipal, Imphal, Mumbai, Gandhinagar uh, and elsewhere. This particular conference is part of a series to strengthen our academic and research links with the Latin American and Caribbean region. We of course have MOUs 
with partner institutions in Brazil, the Dominican Republic, Mexico, and Argentina. But we also look forward to expanding these relationships to other countries in the region. In the recent past, some of the important events which we have organized include the second ICWA LAC International Conference in Brazil, which was held in May 2018, uh, essentially to coincide with 70 years of diplomatic relations between India and Brazil. Last year in New Delhi in November, we had held the event here to commemorate 55, 55 years of diplomatic relations between India and Peru. We hope to do a similar event with the Embassy of Chile later in the year on the occasion of 70 years of India-Chile diplomatic relations. It is of course well known that India and the LAC region, although geographically distant, have always viewed each other with friendship and warmth. With many countries in the Caribbean, we share a special bond of people of Indian origin who form a valuable link of friendship and understanding between our two regions. This entire region has made enormous development, taken enormous developmental strides in recent decades, from the consolidation of democratic governments to continued advances in health, education, and also more recent progress in protecting the environment and reducing inequality. Our interaction with the LAC region has been through multilateral and regional mechanisms, as well as through bilateral exchanges. The region presents a diverse and com complex diplomatic opportunity for India to strengthen its relations. Conscious of the changes which are taking place in many lakh countries and the need to engage with the region intensively, we have attempted to play a proactive and constructive role to energize and further strengthen existing arrangements and develop bilateral partnerships. This was reiterated by our Prime Minister in his speech at the BRICS summit in 2014 in Fortaleza in Brazil, when he said that relations have to go, I quote, beyond summit and leader-centric deliberations and champion sub-national level exchanges, unquote. He had also stressed on the need for institution building in BRICS. Our Prime Minister is scheduled to visit Brazil again for the 2019 BRICS summit. Since 2015, there have been a number of high-level visits to the region with our, with our President Sri Ram Nath Govind visiting Bolivia and Chile in March-April 2019. The Honorable Vice President of India, Sri Venkaya Naidu, who is incidentally also President of the Indian Council of World Affairs, visited Costa Rica and Paraguay in March 2019 and Guatemala, Peru and Panama in May 2018 along with Suriname and Cuba in June 2018. Uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had also visited Argentina for the G20 meeting in 2018. In India, we have had the honor of receiving a large number of visitors from the region. India and the Mercosur bloc, comprising Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay, and Paraguay, have stepped up efforts to expand their preferential trade agreement to make greater inroads into each other's markets. India, wish, India wants to export more processed foods, more engineering goods, and a wider range of pharmaceuticals to the Mercosur. Uh, it is interesting to note, for instance, in 2016-17, we exported more to Mexico than to closer neighbors such as Thailand, Myanmar, Iran, or traditional trade partners such as Russia or Canada. Uh, as emerging political voices from the developing world, India and the LAC countries need to collaborate to bring in definitive changes to make international organizations such as the United Nations, the World Bank, and so on, more representative and aware of the aspirations of the developing countries. Government of India initiatives such as Startup India, Skill India, Make in India, etc. are towards helping India shift from being dependent on the primary sector to the secondary and services sector. A similar path is being developed in Latin America and the Caribbean region as well. Renewable sources of energy have a priority for both India and the LAC countries. 
we have achieved considerable wattage through the solar energy program and the wind energy program. Latin America similarly has great expertise in renewable energy, including hydropower projects and biofuels. The other interesting phenomena, uh, which I don't, I'm not sure whether we touch on in this conference, but nevertheless is of importance, is the El Nino phenomena, which is a cause of concern for the western coast of Latin America also, and affects Indian monsoons. It could therefore be researched intensively by both sides so as to improve responses uh, and, uh, and device strategies for mitigation. We have an amazing variety and wealth of knowledge resources in spiritualism, yoga, movies, television, classical and popular dance, music, and of course, our abiding principles of non-violence, democratic institutions, pluralistic society, uh, which, uh, which attract people from across the world. Indian classical dance forms, music and literature is popular in, South Amer in Latin America and the Caribbean region. A focus on increasing Indian presence in the region through cultural exchange programs should be encouraged and we will have the opportunity during the course of this conference of interacting with the, Indian with the Director General of the Indian Council of Cultural Relations on these matters. Uh, I, I wish to conclude my remarks by again thanking Shri Murli Dharan for his presence here today, notwithstanding the many pressures on his time, and also thank all of you ladies and gentlemen, and of course all the scholars attending this conference for their participation today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. May I request Ambassador Kanai to please give her keynote. Honorable Minister of State, Shri V. Murli Dharanji, esteemed Joint Secretary Lak, Madam Yojana Patel, Director General of the Indian Council for World Affairs, Dr. T. C. A. Raghavan, Coordinator of the Grulag High Commissioner, David Pollard, their ambassadors and high commissioners, <coughs> esteemed dignitaries and academicians, ladies and gentlemen. Before commencing this speech, please allow me to convey condolences to the people of India on the very sad and, very, and too early demise of Srimati Sushma Swaraj. We pray that her soul may rest in peace and our prayers are with her family and friends in this sad time of mourning. Thank you. Before commencing this speech, please allow me to convey uh, taking stock. I'm sorry, I'm reading my speech since I have a lot of time. <laughs> taking stock of the India lek relations is where we stand today. And before continuing, I, on behalf of the Grulak embassies in New Delhi, wish to thank the Indian Council for World Affairs for organizing this platform where we may deliberate and share our thoughts about the way forward in the relations between India and the LEC region. Fortunately, I had participated in the first conference on India LEC organized by the ICWA in July 2012, and I remember how lively the discussions have been on an India SELAC bond. India and the LEC region share many similarities. Ancient civilization, colonial history, adventurous quests in establishing stable democracy, and understanding the changing world order where regions play an evident role in multilateral structures, diversified trade potentials to name a few. The LEC region is sometimes perceived as one region, yet it consists of different nations with own political, cultural and socio-economic realities. This is one striking difference with India, being one nation with the size of a continent. With the LEC representing 33 votes on multilateral fora and a growing role of India's perspective on the same fora, the scope of cooperation between the two is presumably spacious. One example is the United Nations Security Council reform, an aspiration highly pursued by India and also acclaimed by the LEC region. <clears throat> Another example is the fast participation of many LEC countries in the International Solar Alliance. Sri Rabindranath Tagore has a special place in South America and some of our countries share bilateral ties of several decades with India. So yes, 
there is a requirement to take stock of the relations. The bilateral agendas of India and the respective rec countries are as diverse as our region is. Today, by the way, is the cricket match between the West Indies and the Indian team, and the match is being played in Guyana. Cricket is a grand success in building bridges through cultural and social interactions between LEC and India. The recent Indian Premier League, Premier League, IPL, featured a few contracted West Indies cricket stars, and maybe soon Irfan Pathan will shine his talent in the Caribbean Premier League. Yoga has traversed to the LEC, and the Indian Council for Inter International Relations had, has initiated cooperation with most of the LEC countries. As some of our countries have expressed the desire for an Indian chair in Indian studies at the respective universities, and I'm looking at the many academicians in our midst, especially those professors who are traveling very, very often to our region. The practical concept of junior professors from India within a framework of pilot projects targeting to analyze the initial, the initial demand in, LAC, in the LAC region may contribute to an efficient process of establishing such a chair. As one of my colleagues stated, that complementarities should be built in trade, investment, and development. My colleague continues by saying that the LEC region represents a great investment opportunity for Indian companies and strategic alliances should be created for investment in sectors like pharmaceuticals, two- and three-wheeler automobiles, and information technology. I add Ayurveda and agro-industry in this regard. India has concluded a bilateral investment treaty with one LEC country. One country is currently in the final stage of concluding a bilateral trade agreement, and another country is pursuing a PTA. <laughs> I'm not touching upon the Mercosur-India PTA, which was already mentioned by Dr. T. C. Ragwan. The economic relations between India and the LEC are growing with fast pace. Yet, the trade is between India and a limited number of LEC countries and is mainly focused on the extractive products followed by agricultural products. With a combined GDP of 8.14 trillion American dollars and a population of about 2 billion, the LEC region is a considerable partner to enhance the business networks with India. In the area of Multi, mutual investments, some success stories like Mahindra having more than 100 dealerships spread over more than 10 Latin American and Caribbean countries, and Glenmark having moved from sole supplier to also setting up a manufacturing plant, as well as the Brazilian bus manufacturing company Marco Polo venturing into its entrepreneurship in India are worth mentioning. The cultural differences in the respective markets and the costs of trading due to the distance between India and LEC are challenges. Enhancing business networks between the respective LEC countries and India is thus an evident requirement. Sectors such as mining and energy have to be seen as pillars of the relationship for the future. Some countries have a fast av availability of natural resources. One example is the lithium triangle, which is located within Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile. Tourism from India to our region is growing. F food security is also a key pillar that will strengthen in the, fu in the future ties in India. Former Indian Prime Minister, the late Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee has strongly initiated a serious interest in the Indian diaspora and the LEC region has both categories, the persons of Indian origin and the non-resident Indians, the NRIs. We know about the many Sindhi and Punjabi families who have settled in Latin American countries, contributing to the NRI numbers in the region. The persons of Indian origin in the Caribbean countries is a substantive part of the country's populations and the amount of OCI cards, that's the Overseas Indian Citizenship card, is widely applied for, especially by the younger generations of PIOs. The magnetic force of the Indian diaspora is clear. It's a dream come true for the former Prime Minister. And the participation in the No India programs, a facility given by the government of India is growing. 
PIOs in the Caribbean strongly believe that they are citizens of their respective countries, recognizing India as the land of their roots. They may not wish to be part of a pan-India ideology and at the same time preserve their ancestral heritage with Bharat. Hum log Bhojpuri bhi bolte hain, lakh region mein. Recent presidential and vice presidential visits from India, as Dr. T.C. Raghavan mentioned, to various countries in the lakh region has once again showed the sincere ambition and concrete political will of engagement between India and the lakh region. I voice the request of the Dean of the Grulak, the Ambassador of the Dominican Republic, who is the justified Dean of the group, as he wishes to see more resident Indian diplomatic missions in the LAC region. And in addition, I wish to add that regular ministerial consultations may be considered to take place between the Indian government and at least those LAC countries who have a resident diplomatic mission in New Delhi. To close my speech, I wish to recite Sant Kabir when he charms our intellect with an evergreen poem. Kal kare so aaj kar, aaj kare so ab. Kal mein prale hoegi, bahuri karegi kab. I'm not done. <laughs> Just one sentence. There's a substantial stock in the India lakh relations. Let's not get stuck in stock. Yes, there is substantial stock. I wish you a successful conference. Tanyabad. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now may I request uh, Sri Murli Dharan to kindly give his inaugural address. Excellency, Ms. Arshna Kanai, Ambassador of Suriname, the Director General of ICWA, Shri TCA Raghavan, Excellencies, Ambassadors, Academicians, other participants, Namaskaram to all of you. In fact, today we are meeting here on the one hand to discuss a very important topic, very significant topic, subject, in the background of a, the sad demise of our foreign minister, former foreign minister, Srimati Sushma Swaraj. ICW has taken a, a very significant topic with the discussion table with comprehensive subjects covering all aspects of India's relationship with Latin American countries. I was going through the various topics being covered in the coming one and a half days. So definitely, it's a delight that ICW has taken up such a significant subject which will definitely enhance the relationship of India with various countries of LAC. And I'm delighted to be present here on this good afternoon amongst all of you in this seminar organized by the prestigious Indian Council for World Affairs. I am pleased to note that ICW has, is taking keen and active interest in the evolving dynamics of India and its relationship with the vibrant countries of Latin America and the Caribbean. After the ambassador's speech in Hindi, 
परैप्स मैं भी हिंदी में बोल सकता था लेकिन बट फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ द एक्सेलेंसीज हियर आई विल प्रिफर टू कंटिन्यू इन इंग्लिश historically india and latin america having been inheritors of ancient civilizations that are based on the principles of humanism and peace it said that the old world found the new world of america when they set out looking for india however geographical distances denied the possibility of a close political bonding but by the turn of 18th century our links were impacted by the dominant global political developments and colonialism indentured labor from india first reached the shores of the caribbean towards the end of the 19th century and have thereafter successfully integrated themselves into the social fabric of the caribbean countries india has an enduring bond with more than a million people in the caribbean who are of indian origin they serve as an invaluable link of friendship and understanding between the two regions india and the countries of latin american and caribbean also have a shared experience of struggle against colonialism in the 19th and 20th centuries after gaining independence our countries have cooperated closely within the non aligned movement and at the un as developing countries facing the challenges of sustainable economic growth and the fight against poverty and hunger india and latin america have been natural partners in the south south cooperation but despite collaboration at the international level i must say that our formal relations with lac countries remained more or less dormant and minimal for most of the past century however i should say that in the past 5 years after sri narendra modi has taken over as the prime minister of the country there has been a significant intensification of our relations relations with latin america and the caribbean last year our prime minister attended the g20 summit in buenos aires argentina in his third visit to the region since 2014 suggesting a reenergizing and revitalization of our relations with the region pm modi visited brazil in 2014 mexico in 2016 and argentina in 2018 2018 the last 5 years have witnessed other high level visits as well including honorable president of india's visit to suriname and cuba in 2018 and bolivia and chile in 2019 honorable vice president of india visited guatemala panama and peru during may 2018 and paraguay and costa rica during march 2019 apart from these high level interactions there have been ministerial vis visits to each of the 20 lakh countries in the past 5 years such a sustained and intense engagement has never happened before in the history of our relations relations with the lakh region this new found momentum is an acknowledgement of the fact that in increase india increasingly views lakh countries as a very significant partner in its own economic growth trajectory especially in context of our food and energy and energy security requirements it's also evident that despite the region being geographically distant with comparatively poor connectivity our relations have remained close warm and cordial moreover moreover the lakh region is endowed with immense natural resources large arable land and valuable human resources of 650 million which offer tremendous opportunity for mutual cooperation and economic development india's bilateral trade with lakh in 2018 stood at 40 billion us dollars and 
20 billion in investments. It's a testimony to this optimism. We are proud of the fact that nearly 134 Indian companies and 216 subsidiaries are currently operating in the region, employing more than 50,000 people. Our renew renewed will to engage with Latin American Caribbean, especially in terms of trade and investments, began with the Focus LAC program set up by the Department of Commerce in 1997, which is still in operation. As a result, trade between India and Latin America that amounted to few hundred millions in 1990s jumped to US dollars 40 billion in 2018. However, the trade basket has remained limited to a few major items on both sides. At present, Latin American exports to India are focused on natural resources such as soya, oil, crude oil and minerals, while Indian firms export engineering goods, textiles, chemicals and pharmaceuticals into the Latin American markets. The new momentum created by Focus LAC program has been sustained and backed up by a series of policy initiatives, including the signing of India's first ever, first ever preferential trade agreement with Mercosur, bilateral PTA with Chile, as well as the other ongoing trade negotiations with Peru, Colombia and Ecuador. Such trade facilitation measures go a long way in attracting more trade and investments and should be actively supported by both sides. We look forward to the deepening of the existing, existing PTAs with Mercosur and Chile. Apart from trade and investment, LAC occupies a central place in our vision of South-South cooperation and we have been constantly expanding our offers of assistance through various development partnerships, in partnership initiatives under lines of credit, ITAC training, ICCR scholarships and grants in aid. Till date, operative LOCs worth Indian rupees 2,069 crores and grant in aid worth Indian rupees 69 crores have been provided to the LAC region. For the first time, India has become an international development partner of the Caribbean Development Fund, which will enable small island developing states of the Caribbean to access soft loans for developmental projects. The International Solar Alliance, Alliance Framework Agreement has already been signed by the by 13 lakh countries. We invite the remaining countries also to sign the ISA at the earliest. Apart from trade and investment, cooperation in areas such as space have taken a new leap forward with ISRO launching nano satellites for Colombia and Chile and training of lakh scientists in the uni, Unispace Nano Satellite Assembly and Training Program called UNNATI. There are ongoing negotiations with Chile for setting up a ground station for scientific research and collaboration. People-to-people -people linkages have also witnessed a marked intensification with India offering e-visa to all 33 lakh countries and Chile, Peru and Panama introducing a liberalized visa regime for Indian nationals. It's our hope that the remaining countries in the LAC will follow this example and make travel easier for the common man. The past five years have witnessed a new blossoming of our engagement with a million strong diaspora in the Caribbean. It's with pride that we witness and acknowledge the contributions of people of Indian origin to their countries, especially in Trinidad and Tobago, Suriname and Guyana. A first monument dedicated to the arrival of Indians was inaugurated in Guyana this year. I must mention the enthusiastic and notable participation from Caribbean countries in the first PIO Parliamentarian Conference in 2018 the yearly editions of the Pravasi Bharatiya Divas and the Kumbh Mela this year. 
It's of immense satisfaction for us that lakh countries have enthusiastically participated as mentioned by the Excellency, by Her Excellency the Ambassador in the International Day of Yoga since its inception and have welcomed India's initiative for the well-being of humanity. Similarly, Ayurveda is steadily finding a receptive audience in lakh and I hope that this will lead to further collaboration with our partners. I believe that without a deeper people-to-people -people interaction, our bilateral relations will remain limited and circumscribed. I conclude my remarks by reiterating India's commitment to strengthening its dynamic relationship with countries of Latin American and Caribbean, especially in the field of trade and investments, science and technology, culture and people-to-people -people interaction. I also would like to thank ICWA for organizing this national seminar and wish all participants a successful deliberations in the coming days. Thank you once more. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to all of you. On behalf of ICWA, it is my pleasure to propose the vote of thanks. At the outset, I would like to express our gratitude to Sri V. Murli Dharan, Minister of State of External Affairs and Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs, for gracing us with his presence and for his very interesting and thought-provoking address. I also take this opportunity to extend a special thanks to Her Excellency Ms. Ashna Kanhai, Ambassador of Suriname to India, for her very kind presence and delivering the keynote address. The various issues that she has raised in her address have set the tone and context for the deliberations for this one and a half day seminar. I would also like to thank Ambassador T.C. Raghavan, DGICWA, for his welcome remarks and sharing his thoughts on the growing India Latin America relations. I would also take this opportunity to express our senior sincere thanks and welcome all our distinguished panel of speakers from Delhi and across the country to this national seminar. We are also thankful to all the participants, distinguished participants in the audience here for having accepted our invitation and present here and we look forward to your active participation in this one day seminar. Thank you once again. We now conclude the inaugural session. We straight away move to the first session with a five minutes break. Thank you. kindly settle down and can I call on stage Ambassador Deepak Bhojwani, Professor Prajata Gangopadhyay, who will be our panelist and chair for the first session. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, namaste, bon dia, buenos dias. Thank you all for being here. Uh, it's my honor to chair the first session of this, what I consider a very important day um, because we finally have come around after some time in ICWA to hosting another seminar, another two day seminar on Latin America and the Caribbean, which is a huge region, as we all know, but uh, which has not got the attention it deserves, in, in India at least. Uh, the same could be said vice versa. In many countries, I have heard it said in Latin America where I served, that we need to know India better. I suppose uh, this is why we are here. So I'd like first to start off by saying that my name is Deepak Bojwani. I was in the Foreign Service and I had not just the pleasure but the honor of serving in different Latin American and Caribbean countries and getting to know them, making lots of friends, came back and uh, everybody thinks I have to pay for my supper. So here I am introducing, unfortunately I cannot introduce Dr. Ravindranathan of Manipal University because apparently he missed his flight and won't be with us. I hope he'll join the sessions tomorrow. Uh, Dr. Aparajita Gangopadhyay to my right, to my left, I beg your pardon, of Goa University. She's uh, a genuine Latin American specialist, unlike me, who picked it up. And um, Dr. Stuti Banerjee to my right, research fellow of the Indian Council of World Affairs, who also I have known for a few years uh, and uh, has also done a lot of work on Latin America. I won't go into their bios or anything like that. And in fact, they are the principal uh, people who will be talking and giving us their learned views. I'd just like to say a few words. Since we don't have one panelist, I have some time. And I can take this luxury of um, being an ex-diplomat. And so I don't have to be diplomatic. And But I promise I won't go beyond the bounds of what is considered diplomacy. Uh, my experiences in Latin America over 12 years of my career led me to realize what an incredible part of the world India still has to get to know. And it literally is a part of the world that is least known to India and to Indians. But to those Indians who do know it, there's such a fascination that people have stayed behind, people's monuments exist, Gandhi, Tagore, there's literature that has not just been written between India and Latin America, but that has been translated into regional languages. We have such an incredible amount of depth uh, in India and, of course, in Latin America also. I mean, I will not go into the number of institutions all over the continent, all over the South American continent, in Mexico and in the Caribbean that exist to as testimony to the exchanges that have taken place over centuries, two, three centuries, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you've all heard uh, very, very pointed uh, expositions and um, details about what the relationship consists of. Now, first of all, I think we need to also consider that Latin America and the Caribbean is not just a region. It's a part of the world. It's, 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 a, it's an agglomeration of regions, really. The Latin American and Caribbeans realize that. You have the Caribbean, which has its distinct identity, colonial history also, but 
later colonial, later independence. You have Latin America in many parts which achieved independence over 150 years before India did. Almost 150 years before India did. <coughs> so you have this incredible number of countries, almost 20 countries that have come out of an experience where foreigners ruled them, they have imbibed that particular experience and that ethos and even that ethnicity and they have continued living in a region which has today taken on its own color, its own meaning and its own civilization. The Latin American civilization is like no other and if we confuse it for the European or any other then we don't know what it's all about. I would, I would advise all to visit to find out what Latin America really is all about. It's not just Spanish. That's what we tend to think because the language is what it is. It has its own ethos. It has its, it's a civilization in its own. It also has its own political economy. Its political history is rich. It's diverse. And there, I must say, we had the good fortune of having Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru who, whatever you may say about his subsequent politics in India and the region, had the foresight in 1927 when he attended the Conference of Oppressed Peoples in Belgium. It was a leftist conference and you had a lot of very left-wing leaders and representatives of Latin America who were there, apart from others, of course. And Panditji then, uh, from what I read, came home with the conviction that, look, we have so much in common with Latin America. We are colonized. And it wasn't just a label. It wasn't just a mantra that we've lived through colonization. What he really meant was that we peoples in India, of course in Africa, and in some parts of other uh, parts of Asia, but in India and Latin America have gone through this crucible of creating a civilization out of the fire of colonialism. We have so much in common. We must therefore share what we have in common. At that time, of course, there was this revolutionary fervor in India and abroad. And so it tended to be a little bit leaning more towards the anti-colonial accent, which is understandable. After that, of course, Nehru went into the non-aligned the, the, the non mode and uh, he didn't receive, or India did not receive, as much traction there or as much response or perhaps empathy in Latin America as he might have imagined. Now this was because of various reasons. There were histories of political development and political events in Latin America that perhaps led the governments over there to think that no, non-alignment isn't for us. We need to be on this side or maybe on that side. So the first non-aligned conference was only with Cuba as a member. It took about 15 or 20 years for a few others to join in and by the time we came to the 2012 non-aligned summit in Tehran, there were over 20 Latin American countries represented there. Now this is not to say that we had a tremendous coincidence of views because there were, and here I'm not stepping out of the bounds of diplomatic uh, nicety, but it's important to recognize that we had differences of opinion and these differences of opinion arose out of a genuine difference in our historical and political economic development. Latin America had a tremendous bond with Europe, not just political, but also economic, social, cultural, and so on. And much more so in the mid by the mid 20th century with the United States. So there were certain compulsions perhaps, there were compulsions for, compulsions against, but by and large, the compulsions of Latin America did not coincide with those of India always. We see in the case, for instance, of Kashmir, the UN debates. We did not always get Latin American members on the Security Council to vote with us on some matters. Uh, 13 Latin American countries did not want India on the Korean Peace Council, for instance. Now, there's various reasons, and there's, there's no allusion that I'm wanting to take up out here. What I'm wanting to point out is that despite the incredible difference the, in the, that of backgrounds, the confluence between India and Latin America that took place, in my, my explanation at least, I'm sure academics might have more refined a way of putting it, but this confluence that took place, in my opinion, let's put it this way, politically, say around the mid 20th century, for want of a better reference, led into this incredible okay i want to give you I'm, i do have a little time don't i <laughs> i want to give you this example if you go to latin america you must visit of course the amazon 
and you must visit if possible Venezuela. There are two places, one in Venezuela, one in the <coughs> heart of Amazon in Manaus, where two rivers meet. In the case of the Amazon, it's the Solimoes and the Rio Negro. The Solimoes comes in from Peru and is brown. The Rio Negro is black because it has a chemical composition within Brazil. These two meet and for miles, several miles, I didn't get to go all the way, the waters do not merge. There are two different color streams. In the same thing in the Caroni in <coughs> Venezuela. Two rivers that come together, one black, one brown, and they keep going this way. Eventually they merge. This is perhaps symbolic of what has happened between Latin America and India and continues to happen. Because we have a shared destiny in the flow. We are both regions that have people in need of development, in need of integration into our own societies. Let's be honest. India is a, is a society that is evolving. We as a community have found our nationality, but we are still finding our nationhood, as we see in the newspapers or wherever we look. The same thing I found in Latin America. Of course, when I talk of Latin America, I talk of the entire uh, region. And therefore, Latin American integration, which has started taking place fairly recently, after Aladi and after UNASUR and now with CELAC and so on, is still a work in progress. Most Latin Americans feel fairly integrated and they move around and so on. It's getting easier, but it's not as easy as it looks or it's not as monolithic as it looks. So we have this phenomenon where India, as a single national entity, a single polity, is trying to deal with a multitude, 34 nations of Latin America and the Caribbean. And we don't know how to do it because we are not a China which is a very determined kind of uh, political entity and, and a diplomatic and political entity. And so if they do something, they'll say, okay, we'll have this meeting with CELAC every year, and they do it. We decided in 2012 with the Troika of CELAC, which came here, and in fact, they came to this very room. And uh, soon after signing with our foreign minister, a nice statement of intent to meet every year at the foreign minister level, etc., etc., and uh, look where we are. Once in a while, the foreign minister found time to meet with the Select Troika, or now the Quadri Quad in New York, and it's not been possible for us to follow up. These things happen. Let's not blame anyone, because I was in the foreign ministry, and I'd hate to think that I botched up my work. I know that the J Joint Secretary Latin America, who unfortunately had to leave, is a very hard-working person. The Latin America division in the Ministry of External Affairs is sorely under-equipped, as are most divisions, but particularly Latin America. Imagine 34 countries with four officers. I mean, it's, it's unheard of. And the, the missions, 14 missions against 20 Latin American missions here. And those missions also, I mean, I've served in a lot of them. It, they're not adequately equipped. We don't have the language expertise. We are at fault for not preparing ourselves to learn about Latin America. So this is where we come to events like this, to teach ourselves, to hopefully learn, and to, and to impart to those younger than us that, look, it's time we started, and especially with the universities, because that's where it all starts. And hopefully that's where it also will end eventually, when the cycle comes full that the universities will not just create those minds and inspire those minds who will do the research, who will carry on this, this effort of forging links, but they will also create those professors and analysts and academicians who will eventually write, who will transcribe, who will record, and who will teach what we should know and what we have done. Without further ado, I'd like to go to Dr. Parichada Ganguba there. Thank you for bearing with me. And uh, I look forward to listening to what these two ladies have to say. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Let me begin by first thanking the Indian Council of World Affairs for providing me this opportunity to come and speak all the way from Goa, where we are doing a lot of determined hard work in Latin American studies. and. Uh, and I would also like to take your indulgence because I have just recovered from a viral, so my throat is almost recovered, but uh, it may give little trouble, so please bear with me. After this very lucid and very poetic presentation by Ambassador Bojwani, I think mine is going to be very, very dry and very, very, I don't know. So anyway, I'll try. 
Almost three years ago, a lot of us here met in this very room in an international conference that discussed India-Latin America relations. And thus, it is the right time here to take a stock of what we had talked about and how far has this relationship grown and developed over, over the last three years. The recommendations had included a whole menu of options to strengthen uh, relations ranging from political to economy, from social and cultural. Some of the highlights, and I think there are like six or eight pages of recommendations, included improved status of economic and trade relations between the two sides, along with the need to prioritize certain areas of cooperation, like economic integration, the SMEs, education, and trade facilitation. Certain areas of collaboration were also identified, which included agriculture, energy technology, and a common voice on climate change. It was also reiterated how both sides have made significant impact on each other through literature, culture, philosophy, and spirituality. The emphasis on Indian diaspora was discussed at length. At this juncture, therefore, an examination of india lac relations needs a paradigm that revisits them at three different levels. And I have tried to put these three levels as bilateral relations between India and some of the select Latin American countries of the region. Secondly, India and the region as a whole, that is political, economic, cultural and other exchanges. And finally, India and the region in the global arena. For the first five decades, India-LAC relations had not moved beyond friendly and cordial. A number of reasons have been listed for the status quoist nature of the relationship, from ideological differences, geographical divide, linguistic incompatibility. In the words of Pandit Jawala Nehru, and I quote, geographical distances translated into distances of the mind. However, cooperation and support between the two sides was visible on issue-based agenda, be it the creation of the new international economic order, critiquing the US intervention in the third world, solidarity for Argentina in the Malvinas Wars, among others. To discuss the political relations between the two sides, a synoptic view of the relations between the two sides need to be analyzed. While Jawala Nehru may have been the first uh, Indian head of state to visit the region, it was the visit of Mrs. Indira Gandhi that was considered a significant landmark while studying the trajectory of this relationship. She called the countries of the LAC as India's natural allies and visited some of the large countries of the region and called for both quantitative and qualitative change in the relationship. The delegation of businessmen and others who accompanied her and the Fiki delegation that immediately followed her trip highlighted the various challenges that were needed to be overcome to make this relationship a productive one. In fact, in the past, many countries of the region had not been welcome, had not welcomed the various foreign policy postures of India that India had undertaken immediately after independence, be it the Kashmir issue, the liberation of Goa, the action over Hyderabad, among others. However, when India first detonated its nuclear device in 1974, both nuclear powers of the region at that point of time, Brazil and Argentina, welcomed the development and there was some discussion of sharing of technology among others and also there was a talk of signing of an agreement. The political dynamics of the demise of the Cold War led to the creation of new global identities. The inequitable distribution of economic resources worldwide had simultaneously created another axis of global identity, that is the countries of the North versus the countries of the South. In this, it is in this backdrop of rhetorical force of South-South cooperation over the last decade in terms of political engagement as well as trade and commerce between India and the countries of the region has intensified significantly. India not only shares common values of democracy and respect for human rights with the LAC countries, but also contributes to international order and development through memberships of several international organizations and have been working closely at the UN, the G77 and at NAM. Of late, 
The region has also emerged as an important partner for India's food security needs in development of agriculture and agricultural processes. The countries of the region have emerged as a vital source of energy as India remains energy deficient. On the other hand, India's expertise and experiences in the sectors of telemedicine, teleeducation, e-governance, etc. have been energetically sought after by the countries of the region. Individually, India's relations with some of the bigger countries continue to remain unaltered. Whereas India and Argentina have interacted during G20 summit at Buenos Aires in December of 2018, or India may be interacting with Chile in the sidelines of the G7 summit, Relations continue to be static as before. Probably the two countries that deserve mention here are Brazil and Mexico. India's partnership with Brazil in IPSA and the BRICS has also emphasized and strengthened the South-South cooperation idea, with both sides cooperating at times, coordinating their policies with, uh, on various issues of global agenda at the G4 and the G20. However, the recent disinterest shown by Brazil and the stagnation of India-Brazil relations speaks volumes. India's overemphasis on Brazil being the interlocutor for South America seems unfeasible in present circumstances. Trade also between the two has declined in the recent past. Mexico has emerged as the other significant yet potential partner for India, especially after the visit of Prime Minister Mr. Modi there. Trade relations seem to have boosted, but any deeper engagement with Mexico is yet to materialize. The recent visits by the high power Indian dignitaries like the Indian President Sri Ramnath Govind, the Vice, Pre the Vice President of the Vice President of India Sri Venkaiya Naidu, and others to the various countries of the region, as well as Mr. Modi's visit to Brazil and Argentina have allowed the relationship to be refocused on positives and potentials for the future. However, the demand by the countries of the lack for greater political engagement seems to be missing. Mr. Modi's visit to the region could have included visits to countries like Chile, Colombia and Peru, the pa they, as they are called the Pacific Pumas, would mean access to Pacific to begin with, as well as some of the countries in, of major countries in Central America and the Caribbean. Such an initiative seems to be totally absent in the present current uh, India lack relations. Relations therefore remain largely lackadaisical and follow the old traditional path. A cursory study of India and the region speaks of certain positive developments, especially in the field of trade and commerce. It began with focus lack of the Government of India initiative, which brought back the focus of India's trade and commerce with the region. Trade figures have boosted from $2 billion in 2000 to $36.3 billion in 2016-17, along with uh, investment of $12 billion, which is mostly invested by Indian companies in the region. Despite this rise of trade between India and the region, in 2017 and 18, only 5% of India's trade was to the LAC region. In the same period, India's uh, trade with uh, in the same period, trade with India of the LAC region was only 1.8% of total LAC trade. India has is in the process of signing the PTA with Mercosur and Chile. Currently, uh, uh, PTA talks are also being negotiated with Mexico and Peru. Despite this, um, okay, okay, uh, and two other things need to be mentioned. One is, of course, the Inter-American Development Bank's report in 2011 and the CEPAL report of 2011, which said India lacked opportunities and challenges for commercial relations and investment, have both projected India as a viable trade partner for Latin America and the, and the Caribbean countries. These investments and enterprises have not only provided employment for local populations, but also helped impart them with skills that will benefit the society in these countries as a whole. However, the disturbing issue here remains the slow pace and often dormant nature of India's relations with various regional groups, be it the Pacific Alliance or India's relations with Mercosur. In both cases, somehow they are yet to take off and there appears a sense of indifference on both sides. Also, it is evident that all these economic successes of the Indian companies in the re economic success of Indian companies in the region is essentially the outcome of private enterprise and not so much a government initiative. When we look at India and lakh countries 
together at the global arena. India and LAC are well positioned to contribute to drive to shape the global commons. While much of it tends to be on India-Brazil through BRICS, the transcontinental framework, or through the coalition of the willing collectives like G4 and G20, however, it is important to elucidate the cooperation on broader multilateral democratic forums too. India and LAC are strong votaries at the UN, SDGs and MDGs and are collectivizing to bring breakthroughs for a better way of life. Of late, India has been working towards improving environment and keep to its commitment on climate change. Both sides have reiterated their commitment to climate and change and using sustainable development practices. The recent initiative by India, the International Solar Alliance, proposes trans-regional solar cooperation towards equitable and just global clean energy arena. Many countries of the region, uh, we were told I think 13 countries from the region, are members of this alliance and are trying to find uh, common grounds of technology sharing and best practices. Participation of civil society and private sector is also needed for the required incentivization. Moreover, to follow the SDGs and MDGs laid down by the UN, there will be need to synergize India lack cooperation in energy, agriculture and technology. Energy efficiency could be achieved by IT and clean technologies that comply with ideas and policies laid down under sustainable practices. Going beyond the much discussed scope of uh, cooperation in conventional energy, energy security and food security, other areas like tourism, eco-tourism and historical tourism, Latin America and the Caribbean region is home to great civilizations and cultures and have been very successful in maximizing its culture to attract tourists around the world in enormous numbers. India could learn some of these be best practices in this arena and use it in sustainably in their own tourism sector. Instructive urban renewal lessons, dramatic transformations in city development processes, especially how the city of Medellin in Colombia has been transformed, could be another such initiative that could be examined by India. The global south is no longer the consumer of technology. India and LAC regions have emerged as pioneers of technology, not in the league of high-ended critical industry and security technology. Rather, India is a leader in civilian space sector, cutting-edge technologies in many strands of knowledge-driven uh, driven service sector industries, whereas Latin America and the Caribbean is a pioneer in alternate fuels, ethanol Brazil, renewable energy Chile, ecologically sus conscious uh, sustainable development, Costa Rica aiming, to ha aiming for a carbon neutral status by 2021, potential in application involving rare earths, Chile, Bolivia and Argentina in the lithium triangle, they are critical ingredients to power the electric uh, mobility transformation. The different levels of interaction in the interna international arena of late have enhanced an urge to know each other and to the dissemination of knowledge about each other's societies, which impacts all aspects of social and political life. There is a close link between culture and politics in international relations. Culture plays an important role in the evolution of bilateral relations. Identity is equally important in global engagement because it acts as a defining feature among multiple players and determines the nature of ties in the global arena. India is a cultural giant. Its cultural and civilizational richness and variedness has made it a power to reckon with. India has never pushed for hard power status around the world, rather is trying to harness its soft power image in various parts of the world, including the LAC region. Public diplomacy is a major part of soft power. Whether it was the support for LAC, from the LAC region to call June 21st as the International Yoga Day or the popularity of Indian spiritual leaders like Sri Sri Ravi Shankar or the practices of Ayurveda or even the impact of Bollywood, Indian cuisine or textiles which are immensely popular in Latin American Caribbean region. Indian spirituality and philosophy has always drawn people from the region to India. India can influence governments and civil societies in the region, especially since India has always looked uh, at as non-threatening with no historical baggages of the past. The popularity of the Brazilian telenovela Kamoish Das India speaks of this influence. India could also market itself as one of the great destinations for medical tourism. The potential is enormous and the policy needs to be in place to implement some of these ideas. 
Indian diaspora in the region is an asset and could be leveraged in strengthening India-Lac relations. The recent Pravasi Bharati Devas and the Pravasi Bharati Samman are worthwhile in efforts in the direction. Also, linkages could be created between institutions of higher learning in India and the LAC region, which are insignificant to say the least. Out of the various cultural centers that Government of India has established all around the world to disseminate information and awareness about India, very few of them are located in the LAC region. The Indian Council of Cultural Relations, the nodal agency entrusted with this task, generally refers to these centers as part of cultural diplomacy. These could be rejuvenated to be used more substantially to create a favorable image for India beyond cultural and civilizational domains. India-Lac relations have improved significantly in the past decades. There have been more initiatives than before to cooperate from both sides. However, the relationship continues to be largely transactional rather than wider or deeper. India and LAC have found certain common agendas to cooperate. However, on, on the whole, the relationship remains largely cordial. The reluctance on the part of India remains as it has been in the last 70 years. Distances, languages, business practices, bureaucratic holdups, while Latin America also seems equally lackadaisical when it comes to having a proactive India policy. They have also stated more often than not that India is using the LAC region to fulfill its food and energy requirements, which is contributing to a process of deindustrialization in the region. The political vol volatility and economic instability of the LAC region has also added to some of these existing woes. India's LAC policy has also been subservient to India's Brazil policy, which has tended to dominate India's relations with the region. Lastly, the move to enter LAC region has been largely a private enterprise, and it is only in the recent times that Government of India has shown support in these ventures there. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Gangopadhyay. Just a couple of comments. Thank you for this uh, expose, which goes way beyond the political relationship, but fascinating. I'd just like to comment on a couple of sort of um, matters that you went into. One is, of course, the fact that the economic relationship apparently has taken predominance over the political between India and Latin America. I'm wondering whether this is because of the difficulty of maintaining a political dialogue, uh, sheer political ineptitude or laziness, call it what you want on whichever side, or is it because we have had other priorities? In the case of India, of course, I'll leave it to the others to explain how they see it from the point of view of Latin America. Uh, that first. Secondly, you have pointed out that we seem to be very Brazil-centric, or have been very Brazil-centric in our in our relation, in our in our approach to Latin America. My own view is that we've been looking at Latin America politically through very bilateral sort of lenses. Of course, Mexico, which you yourself mentioned, has become also uh, fairly salient in our political exchanges. Although you would see that even with Mexico. While we have certain coincidences, we also have differences of opinion, and they can be fairly serious, whether it's a multilateral issue, the nuclear issue, for instance, and uh, so on. Now, I'm wondering whether, first of all, whether this is a compulsion on the part of India, or is it just something that we've plugged in and we're going with it like electricity flowing through? Or can we, can we genuinely find a way of getting out of this this unique syndrome of making Brazil our unique interlocutor. Because let's face facts, Brazil is the one country, <coughs> and without any prejudice to, to, to any initiative by any other country, that has responded in terms of how to structure, whether it's a, it's a regional initiative, whether it's a multilateral initiative. IPSA, for instance, was born in Brazil. We've also seen that during the days of President Lula, there was an incredible amount of political injection to the relationship. So all these facts put together, do you see an alternative and how do you see that we can strengthen political relations with Latin America, if not through the bilateral route, then 
what would be the alternative or what would be the formula do we take a select number of countries do we take a, say a formulation like the pacific alliance and if so do we approach it politically because my understanding is that these uh, these groupings have an economic uh, matrix they have an economic underpinning because it's not so political really i don't need i don't know if you'd like to comment on that now or should we go ahead and and we talk about this later open open it to right. the forum is that is that okay with everyone yes. okay fine dr banerji Thank you so much, Chair, and a very good afternoon. Coming after Ambassador Bhojwani and Professor Gangopadhyay is very intimidating because I think between the two of them, they've actually taken away my entire paper. <laughs> but I will try, still try and make an attempt at identifying some areas in which I think India and Latin America have come together, taken stock, and in, these are the areas which I feel can be taken into future for collaborations and partnerships. And this, these areas I have identified largely because I feel that India and Latin America and the Caribbean region, the countries here and India have very similar aspirational goals and they also face very similar challenges, especially what I feel in the uh, areas that I've identified. The first one for me is health. Now health is a very fundamental uh, human right and a global social goal and it pertains <coughs> to the realization of basic human needs and for a better quality of life. It is it has an effect on a country's economic growth and it also has an effect on the invest on the person as a whole. So if you have a healthy population you would find that they take less days off therefore they are more productive and they are contributing to the economy a lot more which in turn means that the country has better finances now this can be projected in two ways one could be to improve the healthcare system within itself and to <coughs> encourage people to lead a healthy life which in turn would lead to a cycle where they would be more healthier and more productive and the other is to channel the finances that they save on into R&D research in the health sector so this I feel is one area where Latin American country uh, Latin American the Caribbean region countries and India face similar challenges they want both the uh, countries in the region as well as India want to provide good quality education and health access to their population but face a pr <coughs> challenges in providing essential medicines there is a scarcity of doctors which kind of create a bottleneck and then on top of that you have people who have little or there is very little decimation of knowledge in terms of health care especially in India so I think that it, both India and the countries face very similar challenges and it would help if they could collaborate in trying to work towards solutions to building a better healthcare system for themselves. As was uh, just uh, told by Professor Gangopadhyay, India is big into medical tourism. For the moment we are getting uh, patients from countries uh, such as UK, a lot of people come in from the, uh, from West Asia so medical tourism is somewhere we are booming and if the countries from Latin America and the Caribbean find that it is financially viable for them to send their patients all the way to India or to find a connect through the help of information technology where doctors in the region and in India can connect with each other to develop better practices that is one area where we can look at the other obviously is Ayurveda and traditional knowledge which is within the Latin American and Caribbean countries. So traditional knowledge of medicine is something that India is focusing on. It is something that I have heard from uh, scholars in Latin America and the Caribbean that they are also focusing on. So I feel that is another area where we can collaborate. Uh, India has in its approach to health is trying to build one which is based on communities we have found that in our experiments that when communities become involved they come they become stakeholders so they have a sense of ownership and pride so hopefully similar projects can be held or expertise or what our learnings from these projects has been can be shared with the countries in the region such that we can build a partnership which i feel is re required because health <coughs> and healthcare is a diverse and complex topic in which one country working towards a goal would really not be beneficial because today we have a situation where and pandemics get, like this and disease can spread from one country to the other therefore and with 
tourism becoming a booming business you now have a plane load of people going from one country and then dispersing internationally so a collaboration is really what I feel a need of the hour the second area that I have identified is agriculture, which I find forms a very core of food and nutritional security requirements, both for the countries of the region as well as for India. Now, from an Indian perspective, India has made a lot of progress in the agricultural sector in the last few decades, but it also in and this progress has meant that it has found food security. We are no longer food dependent on other countries. We have enough resources and enough food. Now, the problem arises in the distribution of this food because, unfortunately for us, our food processing industry and the technology required for it is not yet up to date. And this has meant that the central problem that is facing a lot of Indians today is hunger and nutritional security rather than access to call, uh, rather than not having food per se within the country. And I feel that the most vulnerable people in this sector are the poor, the tribal population of India who have very little access, rural women, and especially the girl child. Now, it is something I find that Latin America and the Caribbean region has a lot more expertise on. My studies have shown that there, the countries in the region have come together to uh, build better uh, systems or educating their uh, citizens about food wastage on how to reduce food loss. You also have better technology in terms of labeling and standardizations of expiry uh, dates and manufacturing dates, which increases the shelf life of the food products, which can be then transported for larger audience. Then you have also a very important uh, technology or development, which is there in Argentina, which is these bags in which food grains can be stored for a lot longer period. And this reduces the cost of building uh, brick and mortar storage facilities, which is a problem in India because a lot of the food grains that we have remain open to the elements and get destroyed. Latin America and the Caribbean, especially the Caribbean region, also can provide India with expertise in terms of how to increase the yield per hectare because they, like us, have small land holdings, but they have been able to come together and work out on increasing the yield without using a lot of pesticides and also doing a lot more water management than we have been able to do. Which brings me to my <coughs> next uh, area in which we can collaborate, which is on water. Now, climate change was mentioned in the inaugural session, and I feel that as climate is changing, there is a change in weather pattern. Uh, the Director General of ICWA mentioned El Nino. What that, that is also affecting climate around the world. It is changing weather patterns, leading to a scarcity in some areas and flooding in another. Now, Indian agriculture is largely dependent on the monsoons. With the monsoons now shifting pattern, you have the sector now dependent on groundwater levels, which are reducing drastically. And this is a similar problem, I feel, that the uh, countries of the region in Latin America and the Caribbean also face, as they also have in, in agriculture remains a very important sector of their economy. So working together in trying to find uh, solutions to managing water, I think, are another area where we can work together because this is not just as an aspect of economy in terms of how farmers or agriculture is using it, it is also used in industry. Latin America and the Caribbean region in the renewable sector have a huge stake in hydroelectricity, so you have that. And for India, it is, and for Latin America, for both, uh, we have the issue of providing portable drinking water to our population. So you need water management which would provide or tick mark on all of these issues. So I feel that it is an area which in the future, water security is going to be a very important part of the security paradigm that nations are going to build. And in India today, we have the city of Chennai in Tamil Nadu, which is facing water scarcity. In uh, a lot of parts in northern India, you have communities which are guarding their water supplies because the other community has scarce resources, so they do not wish to share. So we do not wish to have these differences coming up more and becoming a part of the um, interstate relations between nations. Taking from
from that, I feel the next area which has already been mentioned by Professor Gangopadhyay, and I will not take a lot of time on that, is renewable energy. Latin America has made a lot of stride in terms of developing renewable energy. India is catching up, and as was said, India is uh, has very ambitious plans in its renewable energy resources for its uh, larger goal, and we're trying to focus on solar energy. So there are expertise in this way that we can share. We have expertise on solar energy, whereas Latin America and the Caribbean nations have expertise in the other sources. And lastly, I find that all of this can be tied together by uh, our collaboration in space and satellite technology. Now, space technology, I feel, is a very powerful enabler. It provides a, a variety of vital inputs for holistic and rapid development of the countries. And India is among one of the leading countries which is developing end-to-end -end capabilities in both satellite remote sensing and communication. The Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, has made remarkable progress in building state-of-the-art space infrastructure, such as the India uh, Indian National Satellite for Communication and the India Remote Sensing Satellite for Earth Observation. And as was mentioned, we are also working with Latin American Caribbean countries towards developing nano satellites. And we have launched satellites for a few countries. Uh, not just from the region but also internationally and one of the reasons for that is that it has been found that our space technology actually provides you with a cheaper alternative to international uh, other space uh, technologies so i feel space technology ties up the other four uh, uh, areas of cooperation very nicely because space technology can provide you with inputs on weather patterns which would be very interesting for farmers it provides you with soil details it will provide you with w the areas where ground recharge water recharge can be done so that's your agricultural sector being taken care of in health sector India is using IT technology to connect your urban bases with primary health care givers in rural areas because they're the first responders they're also we are also trying to build a database of patients so that patients do not have to lug all their paperwork from a small little village all the way to the urban center that can be shifted electronically in terms of water security like I said they're trying we're doing it to identify rivers we're trying to identify water recharge grounds so I think space secure uh, space technology or collaboration in this will overarchingly help in the collaboration in other areas that we have and in conclusion, I would like to say that while we are taking stock of the relations that we share between India and the Latin American Caribbean countries, it is also time that we try to find the next uh, areas of collaboration for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Banerjee. I was particularly interested in your selection of themes. You've covered extensively several themes which are absolutely vital to collaboration between India and Latin America as indeed between any two peoples or countries or institutions. Health, agriculture, climate change, renewable energy, space tech. How quickly we have telescoped from what I was talking about the 20th century primarily because that's when I wanted to comment upon the political relationship being consolidated, evolving, coming to where we are today. And what uh, Professor Gangopadhyay said about the, the dynamics, the, the, the aberrations perhaps, because let's be honest with ourselves, if political relations are not being consolidated to the extent they should be with the effort we're putting in, then why? It's our, it's our role, it's our duty, it's our prerogative to question. Now, as far as you're concerned, Dr. Banerjee, what you've pointed out is, is, is in fact nothing to do with the political relationship, which means you assume the political relationship has conveyed its blessings and that all these areas of cooperation can and should thrive, which is good, which means that there is a feeling in the among think tanks and I, I hope it is rec it's reciprocated in Latin America because I haven't really participated in much uh, on that side. I hope it's reciprocated because this is really what would form the bedrock of a solid political relationship. 
I mean, it, it, it brings, there are so many instances, whether it's Embrapa with ICAR, or whether it's the Colombian bamboo mission with that of India. You could, you could find hundreds of examples of collaboration where two countries, India and someone in Latin America, has been collaborating on something as vital as food, nutrition, water, health, etc., etc. Now, whether this is enough, I can't say. So, we come to this dialectical question, always. Is it the political relationship that comes first? Or is it the horse, which is the collaboration, that will drive the cart of the political relationship? I think I'd like to open that to our distinguished audience and, of course, to our panelists to comment. Uh, I don't know, Professor Gangopadhyay, whether you'd like to comment, because uh, let me try and explain, for if in case I haven't been very specific. The idea here is that we need to strengthen the political relationship. One can ask why. One can ask why because one can assume that the political relationship is excellent. In fact, whenever I write about Latin America, I can hardly think of three instances, and even those were aberrations. When Ecuador decided to recognize Khalistan in the 80s, it was an aberration. It was a vice president who had decided to do something, and then, in fact, they backed off. There was nothing wrong. There was a difference of opinion on our nuclear sort of coming out of the closet at one point, but I think eventually most Latin America, if not all, has come to accept the fact that, look, we are what we are and so on. Uh, we can go more risque and talk about our recent um, steps taken by the government of India on Kashmir. How will Latin America react on that? Now, there could be several different voices, several different opinions which may not be voiced. But this is directly relevant to the strength of the political relationship. Because if the political relationship is strong, as it was in the case of France, I was in France when the French president told our prime minister, whose delegation I was accompanying, that they understood if we were going to have a nuclear test. They made it very clear. Now here again, this is what the political relationship is really about. Not just funding and feeding programs and initiatives between two countries and of course strengthening them, but also having that confidence that if I do something or if I ask for something, I will find reciprocal interest on the other side. Now, this is where the real game is, I presume. I mean, speaking as a former practitioner, I would like just to ask our academic friends what they think and how they see it and how they, what they recommend. And of course, anyone on, from the floor is please welcome to join and raise your hands and we'll give you a mic. Uh, Professor Gangopadhyay? Uh, I would like, I would request somebody from the ICWA to please note the people who are asking and then I, I, I can't tell, so I'd, I'd like first Professor Gangopadhyay to make some remarks if possible, Dr. Banerjee, then we go to the floor, all right? Uh, thank you, Ambassador Bojwani. Uh, the the questions, I mean, the issues that you've raised are the very, very crux of India-Latin America relations. When, uh, when uh, you know, a lot of it is, it is about images. For instance, when we talk about India-Latin relations, it itself is a kind of a very sort of a image which is wrong because lack is 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 one and a half continents and india is a country so when you put the two together the image is somehow wrong okay, okay. and that itself shows where the problem is when you are not giving equal importance to the 34 countries that are there or at least identifying a select few countries who you think would be you know successful in engaging politically this is what happens because it seems that either you are putting your entire energy into uh, you know which is completely dispersed over the 34 countries or you are not putting any energy into developing this relationship right. so the image itself i feel is wrong somewhere so you believe we should have a more focus a higher focus and the, the, the question the, the question you raise or the problem you foresee is how do we channelize this focus? Yeah, I, I think we need to do it and I think there could be maybe two ways or maybe more. But I think we need to first identify which countries we are going to strengthen bilateral relations with. And in a sense, we have not been very successful in, uh, in, in sort of pushing 
traditional areas of cooperation politically because you know they have remained what they have remained they have not grown they've they've been dormant they've been static and that could be a problem on our side it could be a problem on the latin american countries side i'm not saying that but somehow we are not been able to use that as we have used it with other countries you know our and strengthen our political relationship so we need to find new sectors where we can uh, identify and strengthen this relationship if traditional sectors are not working that i think that that is one way of doing it secondly we need to also find areas of cooperation which are of interest to both sides at the multilateral forum because today i mean to say you know a country or another country is going to f- follow us or you know say yes to everything that we are doing or we say yes to the, it's not going to everybody is agenda driven sure. and interest also shift you know they 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 evolve they change so we have to we have to do it therefore at at various levels and we we and therefore my belief is that we cannot do it with all 34 countries together at the same time of course not yes <coughs> certainly and also the flip side of that is that if there is an interest from the other side from the latin american or the caribbean side in a particular issue how well okay. are we equipped <coughs> and how well do we respond and and reciprocate or look after that interest or at least understand it uh, dr banerjee any comments uh, sir on your question uh, of whether the the response from the two sides has been there my studies or my feeling is that yes i feel that i agree with dr gangopadhyay that we cannot uh, look at the latin america and the caribbean country as a whole and give them the same amount of attention to all 34 countries but i feel that as of today there is an interest within latin america and the caribbean countries and in india in trying to find ways in which we can actually come together work towards a relationship which is much stronger than the one that we have had before so in this i think we have we are taking the baby steps in trying to figure out which countries we had a bilateral strong bilateral relation with and to strengthen that but also trying to identify for ourselves the next step in this relationship and going beyond the countries that we have traditionally partnered with to find other countries because now the relationship is also a little bit based on issues on which we converge so i think that is also pushing the agenda thank you um, the floor is open Uh, there's a gentleman at the end. Do we have a mic? Hi, I am a uh, Pankaj Jha. Used to work over here. Hello, Pankaj. Hi. Pankaj used to be director research here. <laughs> Sir, I have very two specific questions. First, when you look at the you know geographic constructs and the anchorages, uh, you know how to anchor. With regard to Indo-Pacific, we have a have a point which is east part of Africa. but what you look at the you know larger eastern part where we define our you know basic point of reference with regard to indo pacific uh, somewhere we are missing you know it's ends at oceania do you think the time is right to really extend it to the western part of uh, south america to say it the least because we already have uh, you know some observer status in pacific alliance if i'm not wrong the second aspect of this this tuti raised with regard to renewable energy you know we talk about solar energy very now very recently but if you look into the initiatives that <coughs> latin america has taken with regard to ethanol you know composition in the petroleum and dispensation in petrol pumps they are 10 years earlier than us maybe that is the reason that we can really share some understanding on these aspects of it uh, because we have yet to start you know because ethanol will bring about some Uh, benefits to the sugar cane farmers of india also let me remind you that uh, on that aspect of it and uh, one question to aparajita my senior in the jnu itself so uh, basically when you talk about all these aspects which are there with regard to latin american initiatives all those things we have done a lot of initiatives with regard to africa we have a forum then we have all those things can we undertake a dialogue completely compositing this whole thumb thing and at least every 3 years or 4 years at least address it at a very preliminary preliminary levels thank you thank you we'll take the questions and maybe there'll be some issues in common which can be addressed by the panel please uh, ladies first uh, hi good afternoon my name is devika and i'm a phd student at jnu in the latin american studies program 
just talking about the very important issue that was raised towards the end, how Latin America and the Caribbean is a very, very diverse region and it's difficult to coordinate with everybody equally. My question is regarding, uh, it's a rather comparative question. The, um, China kind of made a China CELAC forum and where uh, a lot of political diplomatic conversation was started even though most of the engagement with the region remained bilateral. Why was India not never interested in forming a similar <laughs> collaboration? And uh, were such a collaboration to form even now, would it be useful? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is uh, Rajkumar Kuthari from the Department of Political Science, Vidyashagur University, West Bengal. Uh, to, this is to Apurajita. Uh, very nice presentation, both the paper presenters. Um, I compliment and thank both of them. Uh, you have uh, given a very extensive coverage of India, Latin America, and the Caribbean relations and all. And to my mind, uh, as a student of political science, uh, the political relations uh, needs to be given more uh, focus and priority, uh, given the fact that Brazil and India, particularly you have mentioned about Brazil, in, Lat uh, in Latin American countries that uh, in recent years that Brazil has not taken much interest and keen interest. My point is that both are part of India and Brazil, both are part of BRICS. And uh, that is a forum uh, where the two countries can collaborate and coordinate. This is one. And secondly, with regard to restructuring the Security Council, uh, where um, India as well as Brazil uh, both are aspirants of uh, becoming permanent members of the UN Security Council. So my question to you is, uh, is there any kind of initiation in this uh, regard uh, with regard to India, uh, between India and Brazil with regard to getting permanent membership in the UN Security Council? And secondly, this is to Stuti and Aparajit also can uh, mention. A very wonderful presentation. Um, you have highlighted some of the important areas like health care, medical, uh, medical tourism, Ayurveda, agriculture, <coughs> water, renewable energy, so and so forth. Uh, can we identify, because all these fields uh, will not be suitable bilateral relations <coughs> with all the Latin American <coughs> countries. So we need to identify that, uh, as far as the fields you have mentioned, that which country will be suitable for India for what specific purposes, so whether it is in the field of healthcare or medicine or Ayurveda. And secondly, the, uh, this relates to both of your presentation, that government to government or public sector uh, collaboration you have focused, both of you, uh, but in the today globalized world, private sector also plays a very important role uh, and increasingly becoming more and more important. So what is the space for private sector joint collaboration as far as India and the LAC uh, is concerned? Thank, Thank you. you. Here, please. Can you just across the aisle, sir, hand the mic? Yeah, it's okay. Uh, thank you, sir. My name is Karta. I'm a student of comparative study in the evolution of histories. Uh, and moreover, I'm a wanderer. I've been wandering all around and interacting with the common man. Have you wandered to Latin America <coughs> ever? I, I couldn't go across that part, but I have met people from that region. Oh. All in Europe, but they, 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 they've been working over there. I work with them. I learn from them. I have good friends all over there, but I haven't been to there. But uh, I want to make a statement, uh, observation, sir. Uh, you have made a mention that uh, care for or is for common man. You have made use of the word is for common man. It's a need to be created and it is for common man to come together because of the distance that exists between two continents. Over that I want to say, why the diplomatic efforts are not succeeded for so long? Because the common man's views are not taken into account. And the hindrance is at the level, the level I'm talking about, the way the hindrance is, is at the ruling elite's decisions, what they decide, what they think, how it should be taken up or should be carried out. I mean, the, how the initiative should be carried out. 
when the ruling elites are always standing in between and we're trying to solve it at the diplomatic level not at the common man's level but no my observation is there is very simple grassroots i said grassroots observation why don't we allow people why won't we allow people to come together i met the people i never seen anything wrong with the people people want to come together they, 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 yeah, they, i think i think we get your point they, they, i think the panelists get your point point that we are not trying sure for the people to come together thank you very much we are not trying to reduce the distance that is the problem we appreciate thank that you. so you behind you the mic please can you hand the mic to the lady behind you um so uh, i am a student of literature so and uh, you know so my comment or my question on the political relationship may be way off but just listening to you all and having been reading about latin america india for a very long time also what has been mentioned in the panel just now uh, for example for example ambassador bhojwani took us back into the history particularly the mid 20th century then we also come to the uh, you know to the moment of brics so it seems to me that whenever there have been renewed efforts to have a different kind of a world order the india latin america political relationship seems to be strong and cemented so if we look at for example the moment the post bandung moment though latin america did not participate in the initial uh, you know the bandung group as well as i mean of course the non aligned as you have mentioned earlier it was just cuba and because of very specific historical reasons latin america was not inclined to be i mean half of it was in under military dictatorships at that time but whenever there has been a political will in lat the latin american continent to participate in the building of a new world order i think india and latin america have seen a strong political relationship and that holds true even when we talk about for example brics what was brics brics was an effort to say we are uh, here for a mul uh, 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 a different world order a multipolar world order and therefore as soon as you have a kind of a, a change in the political complexion of the continent where the brics doesn't uh, you know have any value it seems to me uh, i may be completely off uh, the you know the reality but as a as a person who kind of reads latin america i see that the political relationship between india and latin america reaches its zenith in the moments when the efforts to build a new world order seem to be getting somewhere i'd like the panelists to comment on this thank you the, the gentleman you're right here yeah. yeah thank you sir ambassador bhojwani the way you presented very excellent you said politics leads the economics way back when indira gandhi was prime minister we used to have very cordial relation with this cuba and we are knowing that their health sector is much more better than india and they can produce much more better vaccines and their average life is much more better than india same is for agriculture brazil they have genetically modified foods and they are doing well same is for i artificial intelligence uh, health care i think we can collaborate with these three, three four countries to strengthen our relationship and we can have a science and technology relationship particularly brahmos many countries are keen for to have a brahmos so why not to strengthen our relationship based on this issue thank you uh, <coughs> myself ss bakhdi from institute of un and unesco studies Well, my question is uh, targeted at uh, Stuti Banerjee, who made a dissecting analysis of the issues pertaining to health, economy, and all that, especially with reference to lack in Latin America. I would just like to know, having made you know this searching analysis of the health problems and the health issues, and all the problems which is created for man, mankind. individuals and groups mm -hmm. have you ever studied also that how it impacts the overall um, gdp of a country say malnutrition 
Naturally, sir, I believe you might be going beyond the scope of this particular session. I would recommend that you discuss this with Dr. Banerjee later because we've got a lot of people who are interested in listening to what they have to say. If you don't mind, because here we want to keep it to the topic of this seminar, if you don't mind. Health, nutrition and economy. Of course, of course. I'm sure she'll have a lot to say. Is there anyone else before we go to the panelists? Okay. I think there was there was a question about is it possible to have a, 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 like a, a dialogue with the, like the one we have with Africa. I think that would be a fantastic thing. Uh, I mean the initiative would have to be taken from both sides and it has to be not one kind of dialogue that happens and then you know for num number of years nothing happens. It's, but it should be a regular you know held and with with kind of agenda which which is doable and workable from both sides. I think the ICWA can begin with it they used to have a consultative mechanism for india latin america dialogue and that i think the last time we had it in 2012 after that we didn't have it yeah, i think once a year we could meet for a day or two and discuss some of these issues once in two years we can meet and discuss that would be a great thing and of course to a to a country country and with with india and the countries of the region of course that's a fantastic idea um, if i may if i may comment on this before you yeah. move on to another topic there has been an attempt as I was mentioning in 2012, there was this charter drawn up in which one of the items was an annual foreign ministers meeting. It didn't happen because of scheduling issues and so on and so forth. You, Somebody has mentioned about IPSA not taking off or not being that strong. Again, scheduling issues mainly. And now all of this goes back to the political will. My point is that if you have the political will, you will meet you don't even have to meet. You can pick up a phone. The leaders can pick up phones and sort out issues. Look at our Prime Minister. I think he meets the Japanese, the Chinese, the Russian, half a dozen world leaders twice a year, separately. And then at summits and other ways, he meets so many others. Unfortunately, Latin America has, let's admit it, been off the beaten track. And we've had rare leaders. I'm, I, I deliberately pointed out President Lula. But you're talking about the, 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 the second half of the 20th century. I mean, Indira Gandhi actually took this incredibly uncomfortable tour to eight countries. Imagine traveling to eight countries in 1968. Eight. Planes yeah. weren't what they were now. And she went halfway across the world, traveled to eight countries, hopping from one to another, jet lag, whatever. But she did it. And it made a huge difference. There was very little of bilateral consequence. Very little. Mainly multilateral issues and not even the issues of today terrorism nuclear blah blah climate change wasn't an issue i mean there was the new international economic order for instance that she discussed she was talking about uh, nationalism and so on and so forth you know so times change priorities change but the bedrock which is the political relationship if it survives if it can endure then you will take care of anything that comes your way I mean, I'm sure academics here would know better than me to give examples of, say, India and A, one or two countries where the relationship, the bedrock has been so strong that it's endured despite all. But unfortunately, with Latin America, there's distance, there's, there are priorities and so on and so forth. So we come back to that central feature. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, so I think somebody had asked me whether uh, the CELAC kind of forum, can, can it be possible with, Ch I think it was you, uh, with China can do it, why can't we do it? That's the whole question, the entire, I think the session is about why we can't do it and why don't we do it? The, and uh, Ambassador Bhujwani is, is hit it on the nail, you know, the, the nail, which is that the fact that we somehow lack political will. And the political will is not of a government, it has been a series of governments. Somehow, uh, when, when you don't have the political will, then distances make, d make a lot of problems. Then, you know, distances, that, geographical works, differences, all this adds again, to... Adds that works to, both ways, huh? That Aparachita. works both, yeah, yeah. It works it's both not, ways, because not, I've seen select meetings that have taken place and the agenda is... You know, it isn't strong. You have to have a strong agenda. You have to have both sides coming up and saying, look, this is an issue, this is an issue, this is an issue. Let's do this. Instead of taking the easy way out. I think uh, diplomats have a large role to play here. And not just the political leaders. Because let's face facts, a political leader will take four trips a month, eight trips a month sometimes. He doesn't have it in him 
to know exactly what he wants to talk two weeks from now with the uh, president of Brazil. He will need a brief. And the Brazilian president on his side will need a brief. He will need to know that, look, these are the main issues. Otherwise, leaders, whether they are Narendra Modi who is very sharp or whoever, will have 18 countries on which they may know exactly what they want to talk about. But even that won't cover the entire agenda. So how do you expect them to go to an Argentina or a Mexico or a Brazil or a Chile or a Colombia and say, okay, wow, I know what I'm going to talk about. This is the work of the diplomats. Now, on both sides, this has to happen. That's where the whole point of the political relationship, that matrix, if it doesn't exist to start with, if diplomats aren't talking to each other freely and saying, look, I have this problem, you have this problem, this is what we need to do, this is what I can do, what can you do on your side? And, send, and then by the time you, your leaders meet, you already have an agenda that is so strong, you have the minutes almost ready. That's how diplomacy works. Sorry to come in with this. But uh, no, I, I no, feel very strongly uh, that yeah, yeah, absolutely. we waste so, we waste op uh, opportunities. So I, I think the, the completely uh, absence of of interest to you know identify or or so the lack of political will is probably the reason that we see that the political relationship uh, between the two sides has has not consolidated. It has remained where it was. It's it's, it's there. It's not a bad one, but it's certainly not gone beyond that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, and of course, we don't work like China because, you know, once they're determined to do something, they don't care what they're doing and who's doing, but they will follow it up. And you can see the number of visits the Chinese, um, you know, ministers make, the, the officials make, the kind of, you know, uh, the white paper that comes out on Latin America. We, we don't do anything. So, I mean, th the problem is there. So, I mean, uh, the political will is completely missing. I think there was a question on BRICS and G4 and all. The question is, of course, BRICS is a larger group. And I don't think we discuss bilateral issues in BRICS and India and Brazil. I think you asked that question. India and Brazil are anyway together as G4 together asking for uh, for reformation and restructuring of the Security Council where they have uh, a right to veto and they are permanent members. I think there is no problem there. And vis -a -vis, and the third part of the question was I think about the private sector. I think there is an entire session tomorrow on economics. I think which will talk about why economic sector is actually where you see the growth and development of the relationship and not the other way. Uh, Ambassador Bojwani is in your pol politics and it's ultimately the political decision which makes economics go around but in, in the case of India, Latin America it's the other way around. It's the economics which is actually to, to a certain degree blooming and flourishing vis-a-vis -vis, if you compare it to the, to the private sector. And uh, pr Professor Go um, Sonia's question, you know, that at, at, at uh, different points of world order you see you know, suddenly the relationship becomes strong but I think also in the case of India Latin America relationship, a lot of it is, in, is personality driven. Mm -hmm. So you have Lula and then you have this relationship, you know, suddenly you have this boom in relationship and you know, we are doing great, they are doing great, India-Brazil relations is doing great. And when it is not doing great, we don't know what we are doing. <laughs> now, we don't know because we are completely helpless in a sense because we don't have that kind of expectations that we had with Brazilians with any other country because we did not cultivate that with any other country in the region. So suddenly we don't know what we are doing because we are completely lost, you know. So I think uh, uh, it's also personality driven. So I think personalities are fine but I think we need to have a mechanism that it continues when personalities are not there. So there should be, you know, a, a sort of a structured, consistent engagement that is required rather than, you know, in sporadic when somebody comes and who likes India or does a great thing about India or identifies India or vice versa, we identify a country in, in the region. I think uh, that is also one of the things I think, I, it's my personal opinion. Dr. Okay, uh, so the two questions that were raised, uh, one was Pankaj sir's question on the Indo-Pacific area. Now, yes, uh, we have defined the Indo-Pacific going from the coast of Africa to the coast of Americas. And I personally feel for the moment the concept for India somehow, like you rightly pointed out, ends at Oceania. But within the council, we have started looking at how this can now be extended onto the coast of America, especially in Latin America. Uh, 
so we from the council are starting to build a dialogue with our partners on the other side in trying to engage them and gauge from them what they find or what they feel of this concept because as of now the countries of the region haven't really enthusiastic to the idea or haven't really brought out what they find or what they want from the concept what are the contributions how they do, do they view it so i think that because it is a concept which has come from within the region uh, like india has been one of the stalwarts in it it is up to us to take that dialogue forward and we hope that um, i personally hope that in the new future we would be able to take that dialogue to the countries of the region if i may also uh, stuti uh, basically we are the indo-pacific indirectly stretches to latin america's western coast through the apex yes. of which we want to be a part but we are engaging in any case also our uh, associate membership uh, or observer status observer, if i'm not mistaken observer. with the pacific alliance has given us a lot of uh, traction with four countries of the western seaboard of latin america and i think uh, eventually yes it could be it's an interesting concept pankaj that we could perhaps think of an indo pacific that would extend to the southern hemisphere also of the western pacific of the eastern pacific or is it western pacific eastern pacific anyway western okay so the basic idea is that i think here you will need volition on the part of the latin american countries are they interested because indo pacific also is a concept that has been created with a certain perspective and are they interested i mean would you want to contribute would chile want to contribute its navy would colombia want to have ex joint exercises etc etc you know these throw up questions which are very valid and uh, perhaps that was behind what the question that you asked okay, that will it eventually encompass uh, latin america also and very interesting uh, <coughs> sort of perspective uh on professor kotari's question yes we have certain identified countries for example in ayurveda suriname has a lot of uh, inputs on traditional medicines so we working with them uh, as i pointed out caribbean they have smaller land holdings together they have been able to increase the yield and reduce uh, usage of pesticides renewables of, uh, we're working uh, there is brazil and peru which have uh, forefront there along with chile and we're working <coughs> on satellite with colombia mexico and other nations thank you thank you dr banerji i'd like just to comment finally on the gentleman who i had to cut short sir your point on the common man in fact there are many things that have been done by governments of latin america and of uh, of india for the common man in fact the most latin american governments have almost eliminated the need for a visa so you don't have to come to delhi to the embassy of say colombia <coughs> or chile or many other countries if you have a us visa for instance because if you're going that side of the world you know you normally would have a schengen visa or a us visa because you can't go directly so a lot of them have taken the very very sensible decision of saying look if you have a us canadian schengen visa you come in for 30 days 90 days you can be a tourist no problem <coughs> that's a very good step for the common man also we have lots of scholarships that are being offered there are lots of institutions that are opening up uh, the uh, indian Cult council for cultural relations has uh, cultural institutes all over we are giving itech scholarships to latin americans and these are common latin americans i mean almost anybody who is a graduate can apply and it's fully paid for so there are lots of initiatives for the common man that are taking place uh, i think we've uh, come to the end of our scheduled time and it's i'm proud to say that i'm so happy that uh, we've got this incredible force academic force and i think we'll see more of it tomorrow and perhaps in the days months and years ahead thank you very much icwa for doing this i i I'm, i'm personally very very inspired because when i started out in latin america it was hard for me to find a book to read a book written by an indian everything that i read was written by an american or a european or maybe some japanese or something like that there was nothing written by a european there were some books written by latin americans touching upon india but they were mainly mythological spiritual yoga etc etc there was very little that i could read even now i'm not sure there are some there are some analysts they've grown and they're very serious analysts and i think this is what we need to do we need to get all of this strength together that's the bedrock that's the matrix and above all focus on what i would say is the political relationship because if that there is absolutely no political problem between 
Latin America. And I t- say this consciously about Rajita. There is a Latin America out there. There is a spirit of Latin America. I feel, maybe I'm wrong, but that spirit persists because different countries of that region talk to each other and they understand from each other what is India's priority, what is India's weakness, what is India's opportunity, and what India can offer them. And that is Latin America. Now we have to tap into that Latin America, we have to present ourselves to that Latin America, and then of course bilaterally issue by issue. But if we do that, and if we consolidate that relationship, if we convey that trust, which India can easily do because we have virtually no problem. We don't even have migrant communities who are headaches for the Latin American countries the way they may be for Malaysia or whoever. Nothing. There's no problem. So we need to develop on that and we need to strengthen it. Thank you all very much for bearing with us and thank you again ICW. Thank you so much uh, sir for guiding the panel and the session. I thank you all for being present here today. Please join us with some tea and refreshments. And tomorrow we start at 10 o'clock. So I invite you all again for tomorrow's sessions. Thank you.